My dear brothers and sisters, warm greetings to you from Rome once again. I am about to leave for Germany before I record this for you. And so far, God has blessed me. Smiling faces, not so good weather, it's quite warm here. But when you see the St. Peter's Square, the beautiful churches, you forget all your worries, your difficulties. It's like a mini paradise on earth. I send you my greetings and blessings from the holy city of Rome. Let me begin with the message of this weekend. It's called the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. But we have an extraordinary message every Sunday, perhaps in some ways ordinary, but then because of the Word of God, it becomes very extraordinary for us. And today's message is once again about the Kingdom of God. How we would be value it, how we would be perhaps recollect and say that is the most important thing in our life. You know, we are all called to be citizens of that kingdom which God has prepared for us. In fact, St. Paul in the second letter today, chapter 8, verse 28 to 30 says, To them that love God, all things work together unto good, to such as, according to his purpose, are called to be saints. Mark the last word, saints. St. Paul calls us saints to be, that all of us are specially called to be, or given an vocation to be a saint. You know, the gospel is beautiful. It's uncomparable. It's as good as Jesus says, everything or nothing. Either you take everything or nothing. Perhaps many of us try to take half and half. We want to be part of this world also. We want to be part of the heavenly kingdom also. Jesus speaks about three parables. All of them are very revealing. The first parable is about the treasure that is hidden in a field. And you know this, perhaps this farmer or whoever it is, discovers that there is a treasure in a particular field. And so, he wants to buy it. The price perhaps is enormous. But then in order to get that treasure, he is ready to sell anything and everything in his life. He doesn't mind because that's the most important thing that he would like to acquire the treasure. You know, Jesus compares it to the kingdom of God, which of us perhaps would not be able to sacrifice everything in our life in order to get the kingdom, in order to be part of the kingdom, in order to be part of the saintly crowd that saint Paul speaks of in the letter of the Romans today. The second parable is equally important also. It's about a merchant who is in search of good pearls. Perhaps he goes to different places, you know, some of his pearls are available in some antique shops or perhaps some stores and he goes and ransacks all of them to see that which is the best one for them and he discovers one pearl which is very very precious and perhaps the owner also knows the price of it and he tells him the price which perhaps for this buyer is a big shock but then he would like to have it by all means you know his determination and once again he goes and sells everything in order to buy that one pearl that will make him so happy that will almost define his own life this is what the kingdom of god is we are supposed to take a, leave everything in order to buy it you know no wonder i'm in the house of saint ignatius and i'm with the jesuits in rome and i can't but quote St. Ignatius of Loyola's message to St. Francis Xavier who said, What does it profit man 
if he gains the whole world and loses his soul it's a gospel quotation but a timely one for st francis xavier who really sort of thought that everything is foolishness everything is nothingness and only the kingdom of god and that's how he embraced not only jesus but desired to be a disciple of jesus of the society of jesus and that's how he came to india imagine if st loyola ignatius loyola had not inspired him with his words perhaps where would francis have been and what would have been our condition we are christians today because of st francis xavier you know the third parable that jesus says also is very meaningful you know in the kingdom of course in whatever we do in whatever we choose they say man is a bundle of choices we can choose anything and everything but the one who has set his sight on the kingdom cannot choose anything and everything he has to choose that that which benefits him that which gives him perhaps the greatest satisfaction and so the third parable in the gospel of matthew chapter 13 is about a fisherman who goes out to fish and perhaps catches a lot of fish but then when he comes back to the show he wants he he divides it rather separates it from the good and the bad ones the good ones he carries home but the bad ones he throws them on the show perhaps or in the sea once again and that's how the kingdom of god is it's a choice of beautiful things you know when you see a flower bouquet the beautiful flowers there there's nothing out of place there so also perhaps in the kingdom of god the choice of the kingdom we should be nothing that perhaps that distracts us or rather that destroys our vision our mission towards the kingdom you know and for this before this before the kingdom everything looks so foolish everything looks so meaningless as we see from the first reading from the book of kings the first kings where solomon king solomon considered one of the wisest one of the richest kings of that time and so much so he was referred to so many others the queen of sheba comes to meet him to listen to him and this man as we see in the today's reading he he finds that god speaks to him in his dreams and asks him solomon what do you want and solomon perhaps could have asked for some more lands some more riches some more things some more palaces some more jewels but then you know this humility and simplicity simplicity solomon says give thy servant an understanding heart to judge the people and to discern good and evil two things he asks the first of all judgment in order to understand rather a heart to understand the people and to judge them judge them means not judge them badly but then to understand their problems and to give them the solutions as we see there's a beautiful instance that has been given from the time of solomon at the time of solomon when the two ladies started fighting among themselves for a baby for a common baby and both of them said the baby belongs to them and said say uh, solomon in his wisdom he says okay we shall cut the baby into two and one of you each one of you can take a piece the real mother says no i don't want my child to be cut it's okay that i lose it perhaps give it to the other one but the other one seems to be happy because she says that okay whatever the king decides and the king decides that the baby belongs to the woman who says she is ready to sacrifice it but not kill it this was the wisdom of solomon and so of solomon asks for this spirit of understanding his people and also to judging them rightly and the second thing that he asks is you know the discernment to between good and evil this is what he's asking for he's not asking for material things you know this is the big thing about the kingdom for us that our time is measured i do not know how many years we will live how many weeks how many months but then everything has meaning everything has a special significance for us 
and therefore in this sense that whatever we choose we choose for the kingdom so my dear brothers and sisters it is beautiful parables that we have today it is beautiful message that we have today let us ask the lord to be also focused on what we are doing and not just waste our time not just waste our energies not just waste our opportunities but seek first the kingdom of god and everything else will fall in line